part of the rig. You see the touch control. You have to get fairly close to it for the color to come in. There you go. And then uh, as I back off a bit, I've got a minimal amount of buttons. The VFO, the band, and the volume. None of these are required except for the volume um, because everything is touch controlled. So anyway, let's look inside and see what I've done here. What you're looking at uh, right there is the motherboard, the UBIDX uh, motherboard. And um, just a little bit of isolation here to, from the audio. Where I have the digital cables. I've run some hash filters, some extra capacitors with some resistors and series. Ferrite beads, cores, toroids, what you want to call them, um, to help keep the noise down. And uh, it's very, very quiet. I, I don't get any noise, uh, any discernible noise at all. And what you're looking at the, at the bottom side here is two uh, voltage regulators. They're the cheap Chinese ones, the, the buck ones. I feed in about 13.8 uh, volts into the motherboard, uh, into this regulator, 13.8 into this one. One of them is 5 volt outs, and I feed that to the, um, the Adafruit board here, which is the SI5351 board. And um, I also have a little hash filter on it. And then this one, back in here, I feed that directly to the Atmega, which is buried back here. Uh, it, it normally takes about 9 volts, and uh, so I keep it around 8.5 volts or so, instead of the uh, 13 volts, which it will, it will take, but I find it runs hotter than it should. So, quick look here. I'll just get on top of it a bit so you can have a kind of a view there without getting too dizzy. And that's the, the back side. And I've got the, uh, this cable here plugged in uh, to the back where I can use my uh, CAT control for USB. It's the same cable that you use for programming. I keep, if I go on top here, the LEDs are a little bit bright. <coughs> Excuse me. And it's basically plugged in here. I've got um, this covered with a piece of plastic right now. And the back of the uh, at Mega has some extra connectors uh, so I can plug my stuff in the back because I can't get them uh, on the front side. So not too many cables you have to run really, just um, a few cables uh, up to the Atmega. You can see the, uh, the plug-ins here instead of plugging in directly. And three of these shielded cables right here come from the SI5351 which is the Adafruit one I'm using. And that's where the uh, what you want to call it? Uh, the uh, well, the triggers, the the VFOs and that stuff uh, come from. There's just the other side of it. A little hard to see in there, of course, but um, so you don't get too dizzy. Uh, you can see what I've done there, basically. And the connector is at the back. I'll just move it a little bit here, and a very large heat sink. That way I can run the digital modes uh, 24 hours a day basically and you can't even tell the turn that I was running at all. It runs exceptionally cool. Oh, a little bit more of a pan from the back area here. And take it from a distance, give you a little bit better perspective I guess. There's an old uh, APC charger case and I uh, just repainted it. And there's the, uh, the top cover if you haven't seen it and some of the other jobbers are just kind of slips right on her and it works very well. It's ventilated. It's a very heavy case, steel case. And that's about in that area. Now, the um, areas that uh, are modified compared to the regular BIDX or the UBIDX is that we're using the Atmega, the 2560, because it's, a lot, it's considerably faster and there's a lot more pins. So you can use very well than you like. So there it is there. Um, my particular display I'm using is the 2.8 module. This is what I've used. Uh, this one is, is called the um, uh, ELEGOO. It's, it's available from Amazon.com or .ca. It works very, very well. I've seen many other dis different displays and this one is really crisp, very nice touch control 
and I've probably purchased about five of them now over time and every time they've been ex you know just exactly the way they should perform so this is the front of it 2.8 it's quite large actually and it may not sound like it's large but it is uh, and when you look at the back uh, there's what it looks like and really when you're putting these two together uh, all you have to do is you take the Atmega and if you look at the voltage um, uh, the pinouts here or right here and here uh, I'm just trying to locate them on this particular one I'll put it this way it'll be easier for me to see um, and I don't get again sorry about the moving around here but there we go so here's your 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 3.3 um, your 5 volt your ground your VIN and if you look on this um, unit right there there the bottom bottom of my finger you'll see the three the five the ground you know the ground all sorts of stuff so all you really have to do is make sure that when you plug it in that um, the three volt matches the three volt so the three volt that it shows on here plugged into the come on focus up there a bit camera sometimes just don't want to focus very well but so basically I just take this and I line it up um, with the right voltage pins then you just push on it and uh, all the pins will just go right together and then you end up with a unit like this no cabling between the unit for any of the display portions so that cuts down uh, quite a few uh, bits of wiring and all you have to do then is basically if I turn this over it's just one way of doing it is um, you normally just plug into the front here but of course it's a display blo uh, block so those plugs what I did is I just took some uh, jacks that look just like this you know these fellas and basically I soldered them to the areas on the back so they're sticking out in the back um, and that way there when I need to plug in the wires to go to the SI53 or to wherever um, there, since there's a jack there I just plug it in so those are not too confusing but there's different ways of doing it that's just a simple way of doing it uh, without having to create a board and um, if and again if you want to actually plug them in together that way uh, it does cut down on the wiring in the first place so you only end up with a small amount of wiring which uh, as you can see right there that's the total amount of wiring three shielded cables and approximately um, two four six about eight other wires uh, you know to uh, to go to and from for your controlling and that sort of stuff so it's not too fast but gives you an idea what the touch controller um, it's 217 in the afternoon here so the bands aren't very good I'm on 20 Well, let's just go uh, see if there's anybody else around. Yeah, the band's exceptionally quiet this time of day, though, of course, at the best of times, I guess uh, it's not ideal. Them in there, but they're low. Nothing there. Let's go on 40 quickly. <clears throat> of course, the digital modes are there, and this is full tap control. Okay, so on upper side, then go to 20. And uh, you can see right here that I'm running uh, FT8. Uh, let's have a look here. A little awkward here, but anyway, which is on the 20. Oops, the 30. Oops. Get that way turned down there. Way too loud, of course. 
very strong signals here. I gotta turn it down quite a bit. Copy signals very well. Oops, still a little too high. Just a quick sampling. The digital modes are always open. And there's a, a bunch of stations that are coming in now. And let's go back a little bit. But anyway, I'll just turn this down here. So anyway, it's full cat control. Uh, as I mentioned in the last video, I saw this version, the uh, 29 Bravo Uniform has um, a scanning capability. Let's see if it'll focus here again. There we go. And uh, what else here? You know, the three VFOs, the 100 channels, all touch control. Uh, and everything you see here is uh, controllable uh, via a physical button or touch. And you can just, you know, use your fingers if you wish. It's very sensitive. You have split. Um, you have um, scanning capability. We'll just stop it here, etc., etc. Anyway, that was just a kind of a quick look here. See if you can get the focus back. There's so much lighting here again. I guess it's having a hard time at the moment. Let's see here. If she'll focus, there she goes. And there's what the display controller is really made up of: one at mega, twenty-five sixty. They're about ten dollars for less. Um, the display I use is the uh, this one right here. Uh, I get it from Amazon. The Legu 2.8. I find the 2.8 an excellent size, and this particular display, as I mentioned, is uh, just perfect. It's uh, really crisp and very touch uh, control sensitive. Uh, you know that works very well. This is the display here. It looks like a lot of the other ones. It's like an MCU type one. Um, but uh, this particular brand uh, is very consistent, so I've been using it. And again, the way I've done it, I just plug it into the unit, cuts down half the wiring, then I run a few wires um, with the jacks I've extended on the back. You could just start it directly if you wish. And uh, that fed basically to the, uh, to the motherboard and uh, to any controls you have. And then way down in the bottom right hand corner there, uh, it's feeding uh, or it's getting its um, frequencies, VFOs, that sort of stuff from the uh, Adafruit. That's it. Real quick. Hope you didn't get too dizzy. Unfortunately, I say the vans aren't very good, but anyway. And then uh, this, these are the uh, other touch control ones. That's the Bit X40. Same thing though. Uh, same features. Uh, this is, of course, the uh, Bit X40, but with the standard LCD display. And then uh, this is a Bit X40, but with a color touch display. Once I started doing the color touch, touch display, uh, it was hard to turn back. Uh, and um, now this one here, be having the, uh, the splits and the, the um, all band and the cat control, it pretty well uh, uh, does everything I'm looking for. Seven threes again from uh, V1BWV and the touch control um, version 29BU with a quick overview of uh, uh, the whole system in, in a case that I've used. Uh, so, seven threes, you have a good afternoon.